Okay, so got back from Oregon, coring at the obsidian mine, and I thought I'd continue showing what happens to these pieces, these spalls, that I knocked off that massive boulder that was in the ground there. These are some of the better pieces. I don't know if it shows up very well, but you can see, see the, uh, the banding, the silver sheen banding here. And that's what the majority of the rock looks like, because that's where I spent most of my time, coring out of that massive boulder. And this stuff is sharp. You can see these edges. I mean, Surgeons have used this obsidian to uh, do surgery, and if you don't think it's sharp, just by touching one of the pieces just a second ago, I managed to slice myself, and that's what all these nice little nicks and cuts on your hands do when you don't use protection. This is a piece of fire obsidian from a different quarry site up there. It has some nice red flamish type streaks and patterns through it. This comes from the area of the mahogany or the, the leopard quarry area. And this stuff is just jet black. Beautiful. Very few imperfections. You can find rocks up there. But it's difficult to find massive boulders like I found in the Silver Sheen area. Anyway, that's just a sample of some of the rocks I brought back. Here's a few more. And here's some of the, the nicer spalls I knocked off. This is the second biggest one. That's got to be, I guess, it'd be about 40 or 50 pounds right there. And this one, 60 to 80 pounds would be my guess. I haven't actually weighed them. But it's just solid obsidian glass, just beautiful. And Oliver's waiting for me to throw the ball. Of course, that's his life. So what I wanted to show today was how to take a, a piece, say, like this. This is considered a spall. A large flake, if you will. I wanted that take that and hopefully reduce it in a way as to get it conforming to the preform stage of a projectile point. When I reduce this thing down, hopefully you'll see, hopefully, you'll see it produce pieces like this flake very sharp razor edge here. Classic flake shape. Stress fractures all along here. I don't know if you can see all that. Thick edge, feather edge. All these are very, very usable pieces. Some of the mahogany, I think it's called uh, a leopard. Kind of a pumpkin color with the black. This is all obsidian. It might not look like it because it's not black, and not all obsidian comes black. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of varieties. I think there are hundreds of varieties of different types of obsidian available throughout the world. Oregon offers a huge amount of top quality. Anyway, that's a good example of a, of a cortex part, the outside of the rock, if you will. The cortex was 
popped off and that flake is very usable to reduce down to the next stage for a uh, eject out point. Here's another one again classic sharp sharp edge cortex from the outside of the rock and when you break it open that's what you've got. So you've got a lot of possibilities there for spearhead projectile point. Here's some more of the black classic jet black. It's sometimes quite translucent with a gray coloration or even a kind of a purplish smoky color to it which is I think just beautiful. Makes beautiful arrowheads. Lots of varieties. Classic nodule cortex there. Struck that right there. Bulb of percussion right there. You can see how it's a bulbous if you will. And uh, I'm going to take these pieces and reduce them down to arrowheads, projectile points. Extremely sharp, razor sharp edge here. No cortex, so it came from the core itself. This piece, a little more dacite looking, in other words, a little more opaque. Dacite being an opaque obsidian. Most obsidian is fairly translucent, but the opaque stuff is really, really nice too. Classic flake bulb of percussion right here. You can see where I struck it at a specific angle, knocked it off, knocked it off the uh, core, and that's what's left. It's even got a curvature to it. It's the physics of way obsidian reacts to uh, force. Anyway, so I want to reduce these large chunks down to these smaller bits and sometimes what's left over is a fairly nice core that I can make a piece out of. This is an example of oftentimes what's left when I reduced it down as the flakes get smaller and smaller and of course what I did was <coughs> broke it, got a nice preform stage and used too much force or did something but I broke it and that's how you learn, I guess.